this, uh, this was a very difficult topic to get started. Uh, it, it, I've signed up to do presentations before, and uh, this was the most difficult. Um, it was difficult because not only is it a, a wide problem space, but there's the possibility for strong opinions. <laughs> and that was, I, I came to that, that realization before the Code of Conduct came out, and that kind of reinforced some ideas about uh, strong opinions. Um, but so the way to get over the hump on, on any of these things where things are difficult is if you're not sure you're going to be able to do it, go ahead and sign up to do a presentation at a conference. Because <laughs> nothing, nothing like a deadline to actually make you do something difficult. So here it is. The, I will say up front, uh, these are some slides that hopefully provoke some conversation. If we don't get through them or if we get off track, that's okay. This is a, a starting point, not an end point. Well, let's, let's, do, let's do a quick survey of the room. How many are on team Xmas tree? <laughs> how about, how many on team reverse Xmas tree? Okay. And how many people on what the heck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's, there's a fourth option. I, 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 I'm on team burn down the Christmas tree. Burn down the Christmas tree. <laughs> Alphabetical order. Yeah, Alphabetical yeah. order. <laughs> yeah. So, so Xmas tree, real quick, is a real debate that different maintainers have come on different, have landed on different sides of this debate, and it's it deals with how do you order variable declarations in C? You can do them in Xmas tree order, where things get longer and longer and longer, or reverse, where the reverse is true, and then there's the, the Matthew approach, is just burn it all down. So different maintainers have different opinions. Uh, <laughs> so before we get deeper, uh, as I kind of said before, this, is, this talk is not about an end state. Uh, this is not a completed, completed work of art. I'm not going to show you the, the maintainer guide today, um, the maintainer handbook. And this really is, a, is meant to be a conversation between maintainers. So this is, this is the maintainer's guide, not a guide for contributors to contribute to my, to my subsystem. This is a a handbook for maintainers to co-maintain and communicate with each other. So it's not for, if you're a contributor, you can stay. <laughs> but it's not for you, but um, it's important that you're in, in, involved in the conversation because this, this stuff directly, directly impacts you. Go ahead. Um, it was represented by someone else that you're also. Oh, hello. <laughs> It was, <laughs> hi Box, it was represented earlier today that maybe you would be interested in helping maintainers deal with contributors as well. Or is that not part of your, what you're working on it, here? It, it, is, it is part of, uh, yes, it's, it's, it's knowledge sharing about how to, how to deal with all the things, all the things maintenance. And that, that involves, it also includes dealing with contributors. Okay, so so we, we will get to that. Good. Okay. But if you came here trying to understand how to, how to contribute better, you may not come away with anything, but if you came here to learn how to maintain, not better, just how other people do it as well, share information, then this may be, may be the talk for you. But what's the big deal? I mean, curl maintenance is pretty straightforward. It's, uh, there's, there's no surprises. The merge window is simple. You just send a git request pull to Linus, done. You don't need to do anything else. The, um, if, if you happen to work on one subsystem, you could, those skills are, in, are instantly transferable to any other subsystem. You don't need to ramp up. If, once a maintainer, always, always a maintainer, and there's no differences bet between any of us. And if you happen to need to take a vacation, or if you get, or this is the bus factor, if you happen to be hit by a bus and, and you're not there to maintain your subsystem, don't worry, there's, there's continuity. Um, of course not. The, the merge window is, is a stressful time for all maintainers. It takes, it takes it's an art form to be able to break things down into different topic branches and make sure that those topic branches are come together cleanly. Um, you do encounter having to talk to other people. That's that's annoying. Um, <laughs> um, and you have to kind of pro prop. There's, there's like a there's like a there's like a flavor of, of patches that Linus can smell them when they, when they like this. This you didn't even cook this. This is raw meat. This is like a and he'll have a Gordon Ramsay moment of why you didn't cook your, uh, your, your patches enough. Um, and as we just saw in, in the example of uh, Xmas tree versus Xmas tree, the, the, the grand debate, it, the, the process is varied on many levels across many subsystems for many valid and 
for many valid reasons um, that, 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 they're, that they're diverse. And there, are, there is no, for a lot of subsystems, there's no backup plan. And this, this can be isolating, especially if you're the sole person in a subsystem and you feel like you, you just can't even take a break because there is nobody else that you would trust to, to, to come in and do the same job or, 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 or is available. So this is the, this, this is what, what, what I think we are. We, we're, we're a group of, uh, that, that sticks together and gets things done, but we're all pointed in different directions, doing various different things at different times. Somehow it all comes together in the end and we, we make kernel, kernel releases. But it's a, it's a, bit, it's a bit of a, of a, of a gang of, of, of opinionated um, of, uh, people that, that are all, they're all trying to do the best for the kernel, but, but don't, don't necessarily agree, and they don't have to agree to get the job done. Okay, so what I want to kind of cover today is why a handbook. Uh, I, I, I give credit to Len to saying say, say handbook because that sounds less prescriptive and more, you know, referency. Um, and uh, I asked this, I asked myself the second question all the time, especially when I was preparing these slides. <laughs> and and then getting more into the uh, actual meat of of what what would be in, in a maintainer's handbook. And I have some straw man, straw man arguments here that we, can, that we can pick apart. And the point of doing it here and doing it live is to get that live feedback and to say, oh yeah, um, I didn't mean to do that and we can go in a different direction. It's it much easier to get that instant feedback live than it is over a over, over mailing, mailing list. So first, first the handbook. It's, it's about being a reference. It's, this, is not, this is not a, uh, a thou shalt maintain this way. This is a Th these, here, here's a collection of tips and tricks that other maintainers use. Maybe you might find them useful. Here are some policies, decisions that all maintainers make, and you may answer them differently for your subsystem. But it's, this, right now, this is a bunch of tribal knowledge that's floating out there, and people have a sense of what it means for different subsystems, but there's no, you can't go find it out. You have to go ask somebody, and it might, it might change. So that's, this is a reference, a, a, something you can keep on your desk and say, how do I handle a cross-tree merge? Um, what's, the, what's the best way to, to prepare my, my pull request for Linus? Um, it's all a cart. Take, it, take some of it, um, leave the rest of it. Uh, let, let it be a place where maintainers can, can, can hang different pieces of documentation and, and share it and, 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 and bat it back and forth. And also capture when, when there is some maintainer debate or, or process issue that gets discussed on the mailing list, there's usually some great advice in the mailing list and then it, it just stays on the mailing list and never goes anywhere that you can go reference back later what, what were we were talking about. But there's really an ulterior motive for all of this and it's that there's, I perceive, um, maybe you perceive it too, that there is, there is some pain in the, some pain in the process. Um, and what can we do to alleviate some of that pain? And I think it's, there's potential for pain in all directions. So all those red, air, red arrows, uh, con contributor pain, trying to get a maintainer to do something, maintainer pain, trying to get, so, trying to get your, 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 pull, your, your <coughs> subsystem updated correctly each merge window. Uh, the feedback can be, can be, uh, can be strong at times. And, and the, the, all, all these places for friction. And so some, some ideas, these, these, these are ideas that we can, we can bat back and forth. But what if, as a contributor, a, a, as a maintainer, you made a statement about uh, contributors expect me to get back to you on new patches in this amount of time. And it could be something like that you know you can meet, like two weeks or something like that. But th there's, some, there's some kind of bounded time that you said, hey, I might, be able to, I, I might get back to you in this time. And if I don't, then maybe you should try to go to the next step and say maybe I missed it or like just, just write it down, uh, two weeks or, or, or something like that. Um, but in addition to that is, is maintainer, the, the maintainers don't scale. Um, I, think, I, think, I, think everybody, I think if you ask any maintainer in the room, like if, if, if there's a new patch on, on, your, on your mailing list and this person reviewed it or this person took a look at it, then you would take a look at it too. And you kind of had those people in your head of like, the, I trust these people to recommend code to me, or I, I trust these people to kind of do a first pass of things before I can take a look. 
if those people are identified to contributors, then, then maybe they can say, hey, I haven't gotten any attention from the maintainer, but could you take a look at this? Um, could you help nudge, nudge this along? Because, because maintainer time is, is, um, is sometimes stretched. And so addressing some of the pain that, that, that some contributors maybe unintentionally inflict on, on maintainers sometimes comes just down to misaligned expectations. Um, did, did, the maintain, did the contributor even know that there was a test suite for mm -hmm. your subsystem? Do they, is, is it listed anywhere that they can go find it? Is it? Or is it just tribal knowledge? Like, oh yeah, everybody runs XFS tests before they send it an XFS mm -hmm. patch. Um, which I, I'm pretty sure people do know, but yeah. But it's, it's really, it, and it's written down for XFS, but it's not written down in a way that you could generically just walk into any subsystem and say, Where's the test suite? You can't ask, you can't answer that question. Ask that question. You have to you have to already know some subsystem specific way places to go look to go look for it. And like I said before, if you know how long to wait, um, then then you're not then because th th this this is why this is why computers have progress bars. Is is you'll wait in forever as long as you know how long you have to wait. And so this breaking that silence of expect to wait this long or this this is the maximum wait time can help relieve some of that stress. And then there's preventable maintenance mistakes, uh, sending stuff upstream. Uh, the, there, there are probably some maintainers that, that, that have an amazing SLA and, and some that have some that don't. And we and annually we have a, a case, a kernel summit uh, or a maintainer summit mailing list that pops up and people propose ideas. And then and some of those threads they, they go into, they devolve into like, oh well I do this for my process and like and we get that like once a year. Once a year, we have people come out of their shells and tell other people tell all the people their, their best practices, and it'd be it'd be better to collect those. Um, there's also a lot of learning that happens when you mess up, and going back and writing down what you learned is 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 huge. Uh, why me? Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, so, I've, I've been I've been contributing. Uh, about 13 years, and I've been from ARM to x86 and back. Um, I spent a lot of time in in storage systems, storage systems and things. But the, I think the, the important thing is is what I've learned by working through different di different subsystems. And I'll also say that this is this is just a small part. This is even th th this is just a small part of the kernel. So I, I know there's other opinions about about and other experiences out there that we can capture. But th these are just some of the main lessons I've learned. Uh, along this along this path, I I sometimes look back and wonder if my first patch hadn't my first major patches hadn't been to uh, Neil Brown, for example. Like Neil um, had the time, took the time to say, "Yeah, this is not great," but or and go do this way. And then I've had other experiences where I'm, "Hey, I'm new to the subsystem. Here's my first patch. I have had negative uh, reactions and and." <laughs> But I mean, but maybe maybe I caught the maintainer on a bad day. Um, but it, it it would be nice if it, if it wasn't the case that we would gain or lose contributors based on what subsystem they happen to land in and the and the mood of the maintainer on that on that day. Um, I've generally found that subsystems with the team are healthier in the sense that uh, we, we all we all get burned out, and teams that have and maintainer subsystems that have that have maintainer teams the, the you don't. That burnout doesn't seem to be reflected towards the, the, the contributors as much as when it's a single person all by themselves um, trying, to, trying to tread water. And I think the most important thing I learned is, uh, so the asterisk ones are, are ones I maintain, is that I, I caught myself inflicting some of the same pain that I wish I had been inflicted upon me. And things like, oh yeah, I didn't respond to your patch for a month, or whoops. Like, I mean, but, 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 uh, just re realizing that that it, 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 it can it can come full circle, and it's it's easy to to make to unintentionally inflict pain on in, in the process that doesn't need to be there. Okay, so let's 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 get to some some meat of what might be in this handbook that we that us cats can all agree on. Um, I call these after the blow up mails, and. I think I think may, maybe we'll have less blowups now that we've kind of agreed on maybe some, some more conduct things. But the one thing I'll I'll, I'll note about 
when I've been yelled at and leanest in the past is there is the, the blow up mail and it's not pleasant and nobody learns anything from that. But, and, and this is why I, I, I trusted leanest when he said, hey, I need to work on my empathy, but I trusted that he'd get there because he sends these great, like, you, you have the blow up, everybody's, everybody's not happy. And then there's an email afterwards after you kind of say, hey, I messed up, that he just goes through and explains as if you were the first person to ever ask that question, detailed, here's what you should do. And I've noticed that that feedback has been repeated and it's been equally patient each time. And why isn't it written, why isn't, why isn't it written down somewhere? If somebody got that feedback, these great messages, why can't, you, why, can't, why can't the next maintainer come along and reference, hey, um, uh, what do I do when I hit this situation? And so let's, let, let's if, if, you, if you've experienced one of those and you have a, Linus explained this to me, right? Or some other maintainer may, may explain this to me really great and help you with maintaining your code. Uh, let, let's, let's start a gallery of those kinds of things. I, I don't know how to organize those, but um, hashtags, I don't know. We, we, we can put them in there to, to kind of let people search this stuff. Um, but in general, having a place where people can drive by and drop off, here's how I do X, um, and, and just, just, just capture that is, is, is a starting point. So a lot of this is like, let's, let's just start at the, at the basics of just capturing the stuff that we know we can capture before we even get, before we even get into the harder stuff like consensus. Um, and I think the, the act, most, act, act, most actionable Straightforward thing I can propose today is something I'm calling subsystem maintenance profiles. And what does that mean? Well, let's actually, let me, let me, let me, let me give you an example of one of these. I'll, I'll go back and give you examples of what I'm talking about for the other ones before we do, before we do the this, uh, maintainer profile. So this, is, this, was, this was me learning June, after I've been doing this for 13 years, and I've been, I've been, doing, I've been merging my topic branches uh, incorrectly. The mail before this was was uh, was angry, but but this one was was followed up with with just paragraphs of here's why and here's why other main t here's why other subsystems do it this way and maybe you should be like them, but don't don't go too far because like it was it was just a huge um, explanation of what what he expected to see. So if if we can jump past the uh, the the flames and, and into the advice, um, that, that's always great. But um, yeah, in, in I, 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 I like I like the ending of this one, and then I curse. Um, but but it, it it always makes it, it makes sense in retrospect, and and the and the patience of the explanation is, is is appreciated. So we actually already have <laughs> we already we already have a handbook. Uh, Tobin had had taken some uh, uh, some advice from from Greg and, and just wrote it up and threw threw it into a threw it into a into documentation tree and and John put in a, a plea to say hey other people land stuff here and, and and we haven't gotten there yet so let's 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 endeavor to change that let's let, let's fill this let's fill this handbook out and so the first thing I think we can fill the handbook handbook up with is uh, a subsystem profile and I think we get into the habit of, of wanting to dis describe to contributors Thou shalt do this, contributors, and we, and we, obviously haven't spent any time describing to each other how, how how we maintain our trees, and so the idea here is, if you were going to go away, what would the what would the document be that you would leave your leave your replacement, and what policies are in place that you that you'd want them that you kind of expect the next maintainer to maintain, and having those dis discussions out there also lets People compare the, these policy choices across subsystems, and also let's, let's contributors know that oh yeah, this, these these things might be different. So uh, I'll, I'll run through some of th through some of these, and we can we can do thumbs up, thumbs down, groans, or um, but some of these are pretty straightforward, and, and a lot of these are just one line answers. So patches or pull patches or pull requests. As a contributor, I didn't know in some systems like hey, I got a lot of patches here. Maybe I'll just send a pull request, and there there are, actually I think it's very few maintainer trees that actually do pull requests, um, net does, and I think graphics, but like a lot of other people d just, just want patches. So just, just state, uh, are we a patch tree or, or a pull tree or a mix of both? Um, the last day for new feature submissions is, base, is when in the RC series should you expect that the maintainer is just not gonna look at your, is going to want to defer your patch to the next merge window. Um, 
So I'm thinking if RC4, if, 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 if you haven't submitted something by RC4, then maybe you should target it toward the next merge window, but different maintainers can have different opinions about that. Um, certainly, there's a last day to merge features where if you haven't, if it hasn't hit the tree by RC6 in some trees or RC7 or before final, it, it, it depends. But if it hasn't hit the tree by this point, you should expect that you're going, you're going to the next merge window and, and not, not send a panicked email through, uh, at the end of the merge window, did you, did you merge my iPad? Um, it, it's upfront that, that things, when things are too late and, and you, can, you can see that, you can know that ahead of time. And more importantly, you can tell your manager, uh, it's too late, look, there's a document that says it's too late. Don't, don't ask me to go hound this manager, go hound this maintainer because, uh, yeah, I think, I, think, um, I, think, I think managers like to see documents that say why, why the employees can't do things. Um, so here is maybe one that might groan, get, get some groans, but advertise up front whether a contributor can, ex can expect to see uh, self-contributed patches by the maintainer. Is this a tree where all patches get reviewed or sometimes the maintainer will sneak their own patches in and it won't be reviewed? This at least lets, lets it's, when, like, when, so I recently changed this for my own subsystem for MBDIM. I said I'm not, because I, you can go look at the history. Like I, I self-committed a ton of patches. And I said, no, I don't like this. We're, I'm going to submit to my own process of everything I, everything I write. I got to go hunt down a, a reviewer for it. And that kind of democratizes contributors and maintainers in terms of contributions. And I think stating that in, the, in, the, in this profile is a useful piece of information, policy information. Maybe. Hmm? Um, uh, for, for, the, for the power dynamics aspect of it, of, of all, all patches must be reviewed, but, but, it's, but this is not prescriptive. Like, so if for sub -sub systems you, you don't do that, then, then don't do that. Here, here, here. If you implement a significant feature, it's probably the right thing to do to post it because people might want to debate how it's done anyway. Uh, if you're gonna fix a build Breakage that snuck into the tray, you just fix it. I mean, yeah, you, you make a judgment call. Yeah, 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 and and, and so, so maybe exceptions for so th this one I was like uh, I'm gonna write it down just because it might this will probably wake up the room, um, but we can we, we can we don't, it doesn't have to be there. C certainly the other ones are, there's less contentious ones that can get there. Go ahead, Paul. I actually run one. I have a pair of trees I run and I run them in different ways. The RCU tree I don't require reviews of my patches. Not because I don't want them, but because because I'm lazy or something. Oh, and, and you're Paul, yeah. Um, the <laughs> Linux, uh, that's, a, that's appalling. <laughs> anyway, um, there's another one, Linux kernel mailing list, uh, mem memory model tree. That one, everybody has to get, in, including myself, yeah. has no, to get a but review. I think, I think it's perfectly fine for the same maintainer to have different policies for different subsystems. Um, it, it doesn't have to be a global rule, and it, and and there's no there's no judgment on answering these questions in any which way. Yeah, uh, it's just a. This is the policy. There is this, this, this information reference. Um, okay, uh, but so back back to the easy ones. <laughs> so a test suite. Uh, just yeah, that's pre pretty straightforward. Pass this test suite before you expect anybody's gonna look at your patch. And if I get to your patch and I run the test suite and it and it fails, then I'll point you to back to the document that said I told you or this this document says that to run this and you you, know, you obviously didn't. The, the trusted reviewers is there to, because maintainers is kind of, maintainers is, is uh, kind of official and, and, and huge and maybe implies more code ownership and more responsibility than maybe you want, but there's certainly, there's something below maintainers, having your name in the maintainers file, where, but the subsystem will, uh, ha has, has grown to appreciate your reviews and, and would, uh, would take, would, would appreciate that person being a, 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 a front-end triage for, for patches coming in to help take the load off the maintainer. So, so th these, this is the list of people to go ping when, when you're not getting a response um, and maybe they can help out. So Dan, we actually already have this in the maintainers file. Um, there's, there's, there's an R colon on, on some of our there, entries. There, there's, there's an R colon on some, but I, 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 I kind of expect this to be, to be more dynamic and, and private and per subsystem versus going and touching a big global file. I, I guess Linus has also talked about breaking up maintainers anyway mm -hmm. into 
a per directory queue. So maybe when that happens, this gets easier too. Because yeah, th th there's something about sending a, a patch to that file versus when it can be kind of more, something more local, because this really is a local policy and not a, it needs to be advertised to the whole kernel. Um, the resubmit cadence we kind of talked about. And just, uh, just explaining that this, this is when people that work on the subsystem normally sleep um, <laughs> might, might help too, because you, you, sometimes you don't know that you're, that you're talking uh, all the way across the world, which is, which is great. Um, we talked, I think in the last talk there's, there was a, yeah, uh, Mel was saying how the MM subsystem doesn't want cleanup patches because that destroys git blame. Um, and there's other subsystems that, that do want them. And so let's, let's, think that, let's, let's not have people waste their time sending these things when, when, when you can be told up front, no, th that's not appreciated, or yes, go here if you want to do that, if you want to do that kind of work. Um, this one came up recently. It, it's, a, it's a policy on whether you, whether you would trust as a maintainer um, patches coming in pre-reviewed by, by the company that's sending them. So like my the subsystems, some of the subsystems I, I maintain, I, I think I'd, I'd like to see the actual open discussion of, that, of the reviews that went into that patch. But then there's other, other times when, um, and, it, and it, 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 the, where a maintainer's like, ah, I've, I've received a lot of, a lot of uh, patches from this organization. I wish that organization kind of just did some, more, did some more prior review. And, uh, and, but at least have that be a policy that's stated up front saying, hey, uh, these, please, please get this re reviewed off list and before you even submit it, uh, versus whatever you do, try to do all that review online. <laughs> that, that's not a general policy. It's, uh, if an organization has a tendency to send crap patches, and you want them to do a bit more of it, it's a problem of that specific contributor. It's not a general policy that you want organizations in general. No, no, yeah, but and, you, and you, you, you could name, name organization directly, or let's like. In the documents? <laughs> uh, okay, so if you work for Intel, please get your stuff reviewed before you post it. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is me. <laughs> I, I, made <laughs> I made this comment, and Dan picked up on it. Um, there are some companies who dump brand new subsystems on me to be the only reviewer. I see one signed off by. And these organizations have huge numbers of kernel developers that should be helping out to find the basic problems. Now, how do you do this for brand new subsystems? I can't say, because I review all new brand new driver subsystems. From this one company, I want to have this. So may maybe yes. I would like to. I like to, and I, I, I try and push back on that. But, but a brand new company who's there's only one developer, I'm not going to do that. So right. No. Yeah. So that's, I'm saying, but you you would name and shame that one company you wanted. From. So, so I don't so want to. Sh no, 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 not shame. Not shame. <laughs> I, I didn't say the S word. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to shame. <laughs> Roll the tape back. You, you can spell um, it out differently. I mean, you 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 can spell it out in like if your company happens to have a significant amount of experienced Linux developer, please. Uh, get your patches reviewed by them before you post them, as a general rule. Uh, which is, makes sense, I mean, we also so all do, and like having our colleagues have a look at what we've done before we throw it out for, for picking. Uh, naming and shaming is never <laughs> that great on that. But, it, it, but okay, it really, it's not, it's not about shaming, it's, it's about, it's about um, I'm, I, I'm a maintainer, I have a, a huge load, I see, I see the, 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 the potential for other people to, to do the review, and that also makes so so, so if, if there was if there was a policy that comp that you said company X must get this reviewed that that actually is a motivation internally to say hey we need to spend time like it's to, you can tell your manager we need to spend time on this because this this subsystem has this policy so you're setting expectations yeah I mean if it's a real policy then uh, uh, be, be, be wary of naming and shaming an organization because organizations can change over time and people can change over time yeah uh, one thing that I've found uh, that this is somewhat organizational based anytime that I was mentoring somebody is I would it, it, before they got started publicly, I would do at least one review of the patch before went to the list, but then I would let them off and post it. But I would warn them in advance that I knew that there was issues with it. And then, when, and then I would prepare my mail while they were getting ready to send it. And then when they sent it, then I would follow up with a private email immediately saying, the maintainer of this type is going to follow, respond in the following way. This reviewer is going to wake up and he's going to respond this way. This reviewer is going to wake up and is going to respond this way. Uh, start preparing your answers and your next revision of the patch now, and try and act surprised then when they come back and react that way. And I found this was the most reliable way of getting a person experienced with 
not only the development process in general, but not fouling foul with maintainers. Otherwise, if it's a maintainer and I'm dealing with it, I haven't had experience before, I just do A-B testing on them. Do you like this? No. Do you like that? Yes. Okay, I'll do more of that. <laughs> repeat, <laughs> repeat until you get less snotty emails. So um, Greg just shouted out setting expectations. I think there were a couple of things that you talked about here that were really, that, that was the key point was, so a lot of human conflict comes out of just uh, misaligned expectations. I think setting those up front is a great idea. But, but I, I want to make sure I can repeat back to you what, 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 your, what your strategy was. It, it was, it was um, telling, t telling, telling the submitter, uh, the, the submitter patch, these are the review comments I, that I've, I've logged, uh, like privately telling them, and I expect these to be addressed on yeah, the next submission. If I'm aware of the person before they send the, send the patch, I'll warn them when they're about to send it that there is going to be review feedback that is not necessarily positive, and then I make them post it anyway. And then I send them an email immediately saying what the likely responses from different maintainers or different reviewers is likely to be. So they can start prepping their responses in advance and set their expectations. But if it's someone external and I see them post something that I think is promising, but I think it's going to fall foul of the maintainer, what I'll include in the review is stuff that I don't necessarily care about, but I know the maintainer is going to complain okay. about. Okay. And so then I, it would usually be prefixed with something like, while this does not bother me and I don't have any strong opinions one way or the other, you're going to be asked the following. So include that in a change log or add a comment about it or whatever that it is before the maintainer gets to them. Okay, so, so you're, 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 you're forwarding expectations that you've learned uh, ahead of time. Back. Pretty much. It, 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 this usually would only happen for something that I consider very promising to begin with. Um, uh, but it's usually if I see that a patch could be delayed by a couple of weeks and then it'll fall foul of uh, unwritten maintainer rule, I'd usually include that in the review process. So while this is not necessarily maintainership, it is if you are a reviewer and you know the person is going to fall foul of them, include it in your own review even if you personally don't care. Yeah, I, I, I've, I've referred to uh, Andrew's, <laughs> Andrew's the perfect patch document to say, hey, I noticed you did this. Andrew may or may not <laughs> pick up on the thing that he said don't do. Um. On the whole setting expectations and timelines uh, for patch acceptance for contributors, one thing I've noticed when I send patches to random people is I never quite know when they picked it up. Some people act, some people don't. Having a feel for that, how to tell when your patch is actually in would be a good thing. Uh, Lin Linus is actually modeling better behavior now. He is, he is now sending email to say, I have pulled your tree, which is wonderful. Linus. <laughs> Don, uh, if I understand well, you are being submitting this. Uh, what's your timeline? How do you expect this to happen? Well, I, I expect it to happen like now. Um, <laughs> I mean, so, so, so we, we can, we, I'll, I'll probably, so I'll, I'll add Olaf's thing, and maybe I'll send out a, a, a test a test patch with describing these profile section. People can, can act and act the ones that we think we should encourage people to answer or not. And then I'll, I'll answer them for my subsystem as an example. Like here's, here's, the, here's the libmvdim answers. And this kind of encourage people to, to do the same for their subsystem. Um, uh, let, let me see if I understand well. Uh, you are submitting as an example or are you I'm going writing to just like the way you want it to be at the documentation? Yeah, because, I, I mean, if you submit for your subsystem, mm -hmm. I will very likely do the same for media, and of course I would change some things, but I would just copy your file, sure. change things, and yeah. put the stuff from media? Yes. It sounds easy to do, I mean. You probably touched on this, but does it make sense to uh, automate have a subsystem specific check patch, if you will. I know it's a long shot, but does it even make sense to start talking about it? Or? Well, I mean, so, so I think that's I think that's phase two, which is, which is, once you've kind of answered the basic questions, is 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 now we get into um, sub -sub some subsystems may have incremental rules on top of the base submitting patches or coding style. They may have incremental things, and so yeah, I think I think that's that's a that's a, a next 
a next step. But 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 certainly but certainly there are check patch issues that that are subsystem specific, and and, and some subsystems ignore some warnings, and some treat all warnings as failures. Um, so yeah, that 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 is a good expectation to set. I have, I, have two, I have two related questions. So one, you said that there are some differences between subsystems and this is not going to be like you must do this, you can take some parts. So the question is why do we want those differences? Because those are very harmful at scale and we have large scales so we have basically non-replaceable maintainers and inconsistent contributor experience. Mm -hmm. And the, the second related one is about the tooling, so what do you think about doing the tooling that does all of this? Because like most of what you, most of the things that you mentioned are actually can be automated and like be supported by tooling and just so we don't have this issue of actually people needing to read this and follow the rules. Like all of the like pass the test suit, the trusted reviewers, the resending the patch, pinging the maintainer and checking for common problems, checking for style and automating the, the right Git operations for everything and um, required tags and everything else. So all of this seems to be like automatable. I, I think, I think, I think, uh, I think a, lot of it, a lot of it could be and, and, and the, the, the zero day infrastructure does, does some of this checking and, and, and I know Sysbot uh, does, does some checking too but yeah, like, if, if somebody wanted to <laughs> write write tooling for this, then I, I, I'd, I'd be all, all open for it. Um, but 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 for the, for the for the differences, just documenting what the expectations are, you can you can compare compare notes and and uh, uh, what can I say um, that just having it out there. Is, is going to be not, not a forcing function, but a, a, a force towards unifying. Like people, if, if, I, if I can look at the subsystem and see why they're different, you, you can at least ask the you can point to them and say, why are these different? But today it's just like you don't know. You just kind of assume that that tree kind of has that deadline. This tree kind of has that deadline. But you don't. There's no, nothing written down. But you can you can do line by line. Oh yeah, we're different, and maybe we can just fix fix that up. So I think that could could happen naturally once it's documented. I'm going to eject here. We got eight minutes. Okay. Go ahead, Johans. Okay, um, two things. Um, one is an observation. Part of this is sort of maintainer to maintainer peer information change, sharing. The subsystem profiles is targeted a little bit more towards contributors to know how to what to expect out of a subsystem. So um, tooling that up and labeling the file once the file is populated in a maintainer's file. So you can like, if you have a patch, you can run it against and figure out which files to read about what to expect about your patch. That'd be a really neat, nice way to tool this. Uh, one, one you, you want others question mark on, on the bottom there. Um, I, I would say one, one significant other thing is documentation. Um, you know, uh, is, is everything expected to be in kernel doc? Uh, what other kinds of, there's, there's any kinds of number of things you might, as a maintainer, you might want to have in your documentation and, and writing that kind of thing down I think would be enormously helpful. But, but, the, but, the, but, the, but this, I would, I would submit that this really is a, this is, that's a down facing what you expect of what you expect of contributors and this is not a statement of what this this main this of how you maintain this tree i mean I, 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 yeah it, there's a gray area there um, but i, I mean I, I can't can't really put down a a policy besides don't document or yes document for a main, for a maintainer <laughs> okay So the question I started before was just to clarify where you were recommending these to go. Would it belong in each subsystem individually, or are you thinking about a global file? I think I think um, it would be it'd be best to, to try try to get these distributed out to the subsystems and and basically and follow up on. I'm, I'm not sure where, where it was, but Linus had talked about breaking up maintainers as well um, and having it be local per per system because then it's easier for subsystems to just change that file when the policy changes versus uh, touching a global file. That's true. Uh, I'm, yeah. Uh, when it gets down to it, I think enumerating the problem space is 
is worthwhile in and itself. There, because there's always going to be nuances about this. Like someone mentioned that some of this would be uh, should be done by tooling, but not all things can be tooling. For example, in MM, there would be an emphasis on certain patches to, des to describe what the user visible uh, effects is. When it's a CPU scheduler, for example, the same policy doesn't hold. It's usually about does the patch have semantic and coherent sense or not. So because there's always going to be nuances, I think it's reasonable to enumerate the most common features that a maintainer has. And if a maintainer decides to publish a capabilities flag on which things that he pays attention to and not to pay attention to, that's fine. But there's always going to be there's always going to be counterexamples uh, and nuances. So it's defining it in terms of policy is risky. But if the common modes of behavior are documented, even if they don't directly apply to a maintainer or to all situations, for at least for new people, it is useful to know what even any of these rules are. And then you'll just have to, you'll just have to deal with the nuances on a case-by-case -case basis because it's never going to be nailed down. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the, there was there was a section here I left off that because I didn't know how to classify it. it but it's kind of like the overview of these. These are the things that a new maintainer of the subsystem would want to pay attention to. And like, and like for for, for NVDIM, it's like there's there's a way to submit vendor commands, and all the vendors want to put all their magic in there. And and, and Linux is a kind of a, a pushback function to say no, you guys, you, you you two should work together. But if a new maintainer came in, they would just take the patches from all the vendors and not even try to to coordinate them. So it, it's there, there, I think there's a, a space to say what are the what are some special rules that 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 it advertises to contributors that this is what the maintainer pays attention to, but also is for the continuation if you hand it off to somebody else, of of watch out for this uh, this part of the code. That, that's kind of what I meant. Though a maintainer may or may not have a capabilities flag highlighting which one of highlighting which one of these to pay attention to because it might be a new maintainer or it might be a maintainer with with a changeable views or they might change their mind as to go along. But even knowing what the problem space looks like, like some are talking about patches of pull requests, as you've enumerated here, just having that list of what the likely behaviors of maintainers in general are documented has value in itself. Because once you actually submit a patch, then you've reached the implementation phase and you don't know exactly how the maintainer is going to react. But at least enumerating them reduces the possibility of surprise. Yeah, I think I, w I wanted to reinforce what you're saying. As a maintainer, what would help me a lot is you have a template that the typical rules that we follow. And then let's say, you know, I work with Samba people a lot. They have a code of conduct. If it's RC7 of the kernel, I want to be able to update the code of conduct without having to. So it may be helpful for, for like the documentation file to have an external link, right? Because these, these have nothing to do with the current code, they have to do with the <coughs> next patches you're sending, right? So they're not really not tied in with, so having a link to where the code of conduct is may be helpful where you differ from the default code of conduct because of your community that you deal with externally. But I think that this would be really helpful to have a template to look at, because as a maintainer, these are really good questions. You don't always think of these as a maintainer. And each community, the test cases they run are a little different. So anyway, the bottom line on this is that I would, it would help me if there was a template, it had a pointer typically to an external page that I can update for anything that differs from the template. Okay, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'd, like, I'd like you to, I'd, I think, I mean, I would encourage that to be done in tree, but yeah, we, 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 I mean, we, we could support whatever the local policy w would be, but th that, that, that these, these wouldn't change that much for them to be in tree and, and you could go, like, but if you wrote like a, a, a document that, Describe like the a nuanced document. Maybe that can live out of tree. But like these kind of one-line policy changes that could be handled as a maintainer's patch. Maybe we could do that in tree. But but yeah. But, but yeah, test is a big one. Yeah. I, I was going to offer the observation that kind of related what you're saying and what you were saying as far as automated tooling uh, is concerned. I, I don't think you want to be prescriptive about it. What I've seen in, in the project I work in is that. Uh, if you set up a set of tooling and it's a good baseline for new people coming in, a lot of times the new people will adopt that and that will become sort of a de facto standard. But you don't need to prescribe that to existing uh, individuals. So having something like this is very, very useful. Automating some of the checks on it is also very useful uh, and it'll organically become more standardized as people say, hey, that works. And then they'll, uh, other maintainers can choose to adopt it or not. If they have a pattern that works for them, then there's no need to change it. But um, I would say that automation is an opportunity to 
begin to build some standardization. So I would encourage that. And yeah, uh, I think point, Mauro gets uh, the last question. Yeah, the point I, I wanted to, to, to emphasize is that, uh, uh, in my opinion, we should put some new tag at the maintainer file pointing to each specific uh, rule set for that subsystem uh, and also uh, teach get maintainers how to get this document. I mean, if someone is submitting me a patch, I expect him to be aware that those are the rule sets that apply to media. So get maintainers should take that information and pass it whatever is sending me patch. Okay, I mean, and that kind of, that kind of uh, dovetails with, with what Steve was saying. Is this, this, a tag is a reference. This is where the document is for the subsystem. It could be entry, it could be on a web page. But yep. this, this is, this is the get, get the next level of maintainer stuff. Yep. Okay, I think that's all the time we have. Yep. Hey, thank, thank you, you all very much. much. Let's thank the speaker.